What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's List Day. Ah, yes, yeah, List Day, and today we're looking at the top 10 worst ritual monsters in the game of Yugi Mans. Yeah, um, I wasn't actually planning on doing a remake of Worst Rituals because, frankly, rituals aren't uh, any worse or better off with Master Rule 5, which was the whole impetus of doing all of these remakes. No Master Rule really seems to affect them. <laughs> However, I did an interview over on my friend Ben Ten's channel, and I uh, did a poll to kind of tell people to go look over at that interview, because I figured if I just do a link to his channel, some people may not pay much attention, but if I do a poll too, it's that there's interaction there. People might be more inclined to YouTube stuff. And in that poll, I asked if you guys wanted me to do this one or not, and you guys said, yeah, sure. So, fine, we're doing it. But in order to differentiate it a little bit from the last one, we're going to try not to bully older cards so much, and we're going to omit any of those crappy vanilla ritual monsters, because they don't do anything. Of course they suck. Sorry, Hungry Burger. <laughs> That might be the best one of the vanilla rituals, actually. Just because it's like a level six, you could play it in Heratics. <laughs> so dumb. Hungry Heratics. I'll have Ryan make a deck profile and post it on the channel. Make sure you like and comment if that's if you want him to do that. But other than that, uh, I think we're just going to get in. What the? F My apartment building's on a corner property, like right by a, a street light. So like, I get a lot of cross traffic and people with crotch rockets. But anyway, let's get started with top 10 worst rituals. Let's go. Number 10 is Elemental Mistress Doria, Doria, ugh. Doriato, Doriato. I, one of these days I'm gonna actually learn to read. But it is not this day. This level three light spellcaster ritual monster has the following effect. This can only be ritual summoned with its ritual, Doriato's Blessing. Ew. While it's face up in the field, it's also treated as a wind, water, fire, and earth attribute. Now, I told you I wouldn't do any of the vanillas. This is technically an effect that isn't just how you summon it, a la Gate Guardian or like every other vanilla ritual stuff like that. So it is still an effect monster and it's not just a technically an effect monster. It does have an ability. Its ability is just dumb. When considering all the ritual monsters on this list, we need to remember that ritual monsters are basically just main deck fusion monsters. They require a spell to make them plus materials and you need to draw the ritual monster itself. That is so bad. In general, every ritual monster with the same ability as a fusion monster is technically worse because you need to draw it as well and it's just a tad more inconsistent because of it. They're all like three card combos, bare minimum. That's terrible. And when you're dumping that much resources into making one of these things, it better have a bomb ass effect. Turning yourself into every attribute except dark and divine is just stupid. Yes, you can use that Foo Rin fuck me trap card, sure. And that trap card's good if you could resolve it. However, is that your win condition to draw some cards or make your opponent discard a few on a slow trap card? And then what, get run over next turn? <laughs> no, I like the idea of a monster that has an ability to become all of them because there is some fun interactions with cards like that, like elemental dragon and things like that. But she herself needs to do something else besides just Omni attribute herself because there is very very few cards in this game that take advantage of a card that does that There's just some neat interactions, but nothing good Number nine is Dark Master Zork. Yeah, like Duel Links props this thing up as like Bakura's card But like Zork in the anime doesn't look anything like this. He's like the guy with the big dragon peener I, I don't know. This doesn't even seem to be the same character. We just don't have the dragon peener card <laughs> Why don't we have the dragon peener? I would play that deck even if it was bad Level 8 Dark Fiend, what, do he, what, what does he do? You can ritual summon this with Contract of the Dark Master. Once per turn, you can roll a six-sided die. Ah, here it is. A, a cheesy gamble effect. If you roll a one or a two, you destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Uh, okay, I mean, that could be worse, I suppose. Two, three, or four, you only destroy one monster. And if you roll six, you nuke your own board. Ugh. Okay, as far as gamble effects are concerned, this one isn't the worst. Half the time, most of the gamble cards in this game are like straight weighted towards the negative effect. They're either, either, they're either like a 50-50 chance, but the negative is far worse than the positive, like Time Wizard, or the odds are just not in your favor to get the positive effect. This one is at least going plus one most of the time. The trouble is, y you can't rely on it because it's a gamble effect. Sure, most of the time you're probably doing something to your opponent's board, 
which isn't awful. However, you are probably going to straight lose if you roll a six. You've dumped too many resources into making the thing, it's a ritual monster, and then you're just gonna blow himself up and then anything else you might happen to have. Again, he's only number nine because in theory, most of the time, this is going to be in fact impactful play. It's an ignition, so he's just a beat stick most of the other times, but heck, he's not the worst. Ibagishki Tetroger. Ah yes, it would not be a ritual list without a Gishki on here. Hell, it means ritual. This level 6 Aqua Water has the following effect. You can ritual summon this with a Gishki ritual spell card. Nice. Gishkis are like Necros where they have in archetype ritual spells that summon like the whole archetype. Matter of fact, Necros are modeled after Gishkis because Gishkis came first. But what does he actually do? You can declare one type of card, Monster Spell or Trap. Your opponent can discard one card to negate this effect, but if they don't, both players send one of those declared types of cards from their deck to the graveyard. Oh man, could you imagine blowing a ritual summon and all of the resources required in order to do it and to make this thing call like, I don't know, spell cards and your opponent just lets it go? Your opponent's never going to negate this. Like, of all the effects in the game you've ever wanted your opponent to negate, this thing is one of them. Like, please negate his effect with his own effect. Entirely different discussion about why those cards are stupid. You never want to give your opponent more options than, than less options. You're trying to win, right? But nah, your opponent's never going to do that. They're going to let it ride because I say they're gonna, you're going to call it spell or trap and they're just not going to care because big whoop, you're thinning my deck. Thanks, bruh. Or if you call monster, they're going to like get up from the table and shake your hand because you're helping them set up their graveyard. That's just so stupid. Gishkis actually have some really good ritual monsters. So like, not only did you play a stupid bad monster, you opted to play this instead of one of your good ones. So you like, really made a bad play. Ugh. Here we go, Vendred Chimera. It's really sad to see Vendreds on the list of worst rituals because they had some serious potential. Zombies? like to be in the graveyard. Ritual decks bleed advantage like crazy, sending tons of stuff to the graveyard. Some kind of synergy there, kind of. I will say this though, it's not the worst thing I've seen with zombies in it. Oh, I hope no one knows what that is. You can ritual summon this thing with a Vendred ritual card. Same as the Gishki. When a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card on the field, quick effect, you can banish a zombie from your graveyard to negate that card and destroy it. All right, sure. If this card is tributed or banished for a ritual summon, you get another effect. All your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack permanently. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. Okay, neither of those effects are terrible. The ritual one, okay, that one's kind of dumb, but if you're ritual summoning with a ritual monster, you're clearly going into something bigger, you're making a better play, you know, blanket attack reduction, it's just icing on the cake, you know, it could do nothing and it wouldn't matter too much as far as your plays are concerned, but it's nice that it at least does something when you use it. So, okay, I can't rag on that one too much. But that negate effect is a little clumsy. It relies on your opponent to be using a specific type of card effect, i.e. card destruction. Granted, that's a pretty common one, so you might be able to use this thing. Problem is, it's only got 2300 attack, it's not exactly the strongest thing in the book, so your opponent could probably just run over this thing and then hit you with Regeki or whatever they were trying to do. You don't want your, your negati boys to be weak, because your opponent's just gonna crash over them and then they don't accomplish what they're set out to do. And the other Vendreds are better ritual monsters and you'd rather play them instead, so it's like, eh. It just comes off as clumsy and, and the deck's just not gonna run it. Also, I, what is going on in this artwork? It's, it's a mess, it's a mess. All right, number six is Salamangrate Emerald Eagle. Emerald, Emerald Eagle would be number one had it not been part of an archetype that's actually a meta deck. It gives it a boost, even though it in of itself in a bubble is just like so bad. <laughs> this level eight fire cybers monster has the following effect. You can ritual summon this with Rise of the Salamangrates. Okay, cool. When this card is ritual summoned using Salamangrate Emerald Eagle as material, you can... Wait, that's the name of this card. So you're asking me to ritual summon this with itself. Uh... 
Granted, you can ritual summon materials from your hand. That's so if you have a bunch of dead copies of this thing, at least you can get this effect off. But it's a when you can, so it misses timing. Ow. Oh, I get what they're doing, because, like, Salamangabrax Salamanga like to Salamangabrax link summon with themselves. So this is a ritual, so it wants to ritual summon with itself. I get the theming here, but, uh, you know what? I don't care what the rest of the effect says. That's a terribly specific waste of uh, materials in like specific deck building Ugh. all for it to be able to miss timing you can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls okay at least the effect is pretty solid it's never gonna get resolved but they printed it on the card so therefore i can at least say it's not bad once per turn you contribute one salem rangrate link monster no once per turn you can neg yourself so incredibly hard you might as well just scoop and this thing gains the effect for doing that at the start of the damage step if this thing battles an opponent's monster you can destroy that card before damage calc and then burn your opponent for what is it half nah it's full you can burn your opponent for damage equal to its original attack power whatever you killed most of the time, Link monsters are inherently minus in card advantage because most of them are Link 2 or higher. More often than not, you are probably going to be tributing a Link 2 or more, which is awful card advantage. Only so this thing can be a subpar should all construct. whoop de freaking do Why did they give Salamangrates a ritual monster? It has nothing to do with the deck whatsoever. Had it not been in a good deck, I mean, that deck's never going to play, but had it not been in a good deck, this would have been far lower on the list. Rituals already suffer from consistency issues because they're inherently like three card combos, which is just inherently terrible. And unless they're bustedly consistent like Necroz, they just don't function. How are you even supposed to do this? You would have to specifically build your salad deck around summoning this thing. You couldn't just tech this in as a fun option because it has nothing to do with the way the deck plays. You would have to throw in three copies of it, probably three copies of the ritual, some stupid engine in order to search that when you could just play the deck the way the way it works and intended to and, you know, win a duel, but, you know. <laughs> this is just really out of left field support. It reminds me of the Burning Abyss ritual monster. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? Here we go, Litmus Doom Swordsman. I have never seen this card in my life. You can summon this thing with Litmus Doom Ritual. <laughs> that is probably what the card would be called. You had no imagination. It is unaffected by trap effects and cannot be destroyed by battle. It's just Elemental Hero Wildheart as a ritual monster. <laughs> Broke. Now, it does have 0-0 attack and defense, but any good Yu-Gi-Oh player worth his salt would tell you, ha, if a monster's got 0-0, it probably has an effect to give itself attack power. That's how the game works. And he is no exception. Gains 3,000 attack and defense while a trap card is on the field. Hmm. Big boy. If this ritual summoned card is in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target a trap card in either player's graveyard and set it to your side of the field. Okay, that, uh... That's a lot to unpack. The 3,000 attack defense boost is okay. I mean, it's not big number. It's almost big number. Big number... Big number is anything over 3k. However, it's still a pretty big beat stick, and um, it's probably not the hardest thing to get live. Obviously, you need a face-up continuous trap card in order for this thing to have, have any kind of permanent attack power. Face downs do not count, and the fact that it's unaffected by, you know, trap effects means that, hey, if you're playing a bunch of floodgates, this thing isn't floodgated by them necessarily. I think that's supposed to be the gimmick, although most floodgates worth, your, worth playing are gonna probably stop you from summoning this thing. <laughs> I wanted to play Imperial Order because, you know, it's good, but I guess I'll play Gravity Bind. And then the whole owner's controlled destroy thing, that's clearly there so you just don't like creature swap the thing to try to steal your opponent's mirror force, whatever silly gimmick they thought would be too broken. It wouldn't have made it playable anyway. Having to have a face up trap card in order for this thing to have any kind of real attack power is just not good. Two things are happening. Either A, you set a card, do nothing, hope your opponent doesn't kill you, then on your turn, flip up your floodgate and then play this thing. Or maybe you played your floodgate during their turn to try to floodgate them, whatever. And then you summon this thing. So best case scenario, it's a turn three play. Because what do you do? Go first, summon this thing, set a card and be like, I hope they don't know it's a trap card. Your opponent is gonna hit your back row so freaking fast and then smash into your stupid zero zero beater. <laughs> and you probably spent your whole hand to make this stupid thing. Ah, but hey, at least it's fun bad. Number four is Venu. Venu. 
bright bird of divinity. Never have I seen such a wall of text on a card that doesn't do anything. You can summon this thing with Primal Cry. See? There you go. That's how you name a ritual card. That sounds cool. Sounds like a video game. Once per turn, you can reveal a monster in your hand and then target a monster on the field. That monster's level becomes the revealed monster's level till the end of the turn. Okay, well, that's not an effect. Next. Once per turn, if a monster is tributed from the field or your hand, you know, like in a ritual summon, you can target one monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Uh, the one effect that every ritual monster should have, and it's on this thing. Yes, if every ritual monster recurred some of the materials that were used to make it, hey, That'd be kind of nice. It would mitigate the awful problem with these stupid main deck fusion cards. But nah, it's stuck on venue bright bird of weird level modulation. Why does it do that? What's the intent? I guess it's supposed to like reveal a venue in your hand to target one of your other low level guys on the field. Make it a level, what is this thing, an eight? Make this thing an eight. So then you don't have to spend so much to make it. Oh, that's, that's uh, so what? You can make another one of these things? 2800 attack isn't the worst thing in the world. Um. It doesn't do anything on the field. It just sits there until it gets killed by something. Also, you can modulate levels until the end phase. I told you, wall of text doesn't do anything. Best case scenario, it's like a secondary ritual monster in a primary ritual focused deck. We're like, I'm supposed to make Lord of Red, but I also make this thing to help facilitate that. Some that's not good, but I think that's what its function is. So hence, it's not good. Venu. Number three is Ruin, Queen of Oblivion. How can a card with such a cool ass name stink? Damn it. You can ritual summon this card with End of the World. No, again, cool name for a ritual spell. Rituals should have cool names. Think about what it is. You're like sacrificing your monsters to summon a demon from the netherworld to, to battle for you in your duel. It should be cool. That's how the anime frames them, so yeah. When this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can activate this effect. This card to make in a second attack in a row. Oh, wow. You can OTK with 2300 attack points. Oh. She got retrained. That card's better. Because it does something. So there's like no reason to play this thing anymore. And even still, this end of the world deck, whatever you want to call this thing, isn't very good anyway. It's just kind of a fun deck. So you know what that means. She's banished through the obscurity zone. I like the card art though. All right, I hate that number two is on here because it's kind of a fun card, but it's also, it's bad. All right, we're just gonna stop here for a quick editor's note. Apparently when we were making the list of the Discord and I, we're using some archaic card text for the slots two and one. Apparently these cards have never received an errata in order to fix the fact that they both say they can only be special summoned with their respective ritual spells, which we all took to mean you could not use a card like advanced ritual art because uh, yeah, that makes total sense. However, it seems like similar rituals in a similar circumstance have long since had their card text corrected to say you can use their respected rituals. And apparently, despite the fact these two cards were never actually fixed, they they both allow you to use advanced ritual art, which is good because it helps play into their effect and definitely makes them a little bit more playable. However, I would not say that they're either very good, so I, I don't think it changes too much. Anyway, Lycanthrope. Like, Lycanthrope? It's lycanthropy, but I think it's lycanthrope. It's a werewolf. Werewolf. There, castle. This can only be ritual summoned with synthesis spell. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, inflict 200 damage to your opponent for every normal monster in your graveyard. The fun thing about this thing, though, is you could probably get away with it in Duel Links because you don't need to have a ton of normal monsters in your graveyard to get enough battle damage plus effect damage to do that 4k life points. I will concede that, but good in Duel Links rarely means the card is particularly good. It just means like, the format's really weird and we only play with half the life points so stupid stuff ends up being kind of okay. But it is a concession. But again, it, at the end of the day, if it doesn't kill your opponent, uh, it just sits in the field and it's got like no attack power. What is this thing? Yeah, 24. Upper limit of level six, but it's also just not very threatening to your opponent. It doesn't, it doesn't put any pressure on your opponent to deal with it. They're just gonna kill it. Outside of a stupid gimmick, like with, I guess, heretics, because they would have 
They would have normals in the graveyard. It doesn't serve much of a function. Also, and this is probably the biggest nail in the coffin, which makes the card just from gimmicky to actually crappy. It's only 200 damage for each normal monster in your graveyard, which means you need an ass load of normal monsters in your graveyard in order to do any respectable amount of burn damage, which means your deck is now a majority of normal monsters, which means you're just going to brick most of the time when you don't draw this thing and its ritual. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good normal monster support is, playing a majority of them just means that half your deck literally doesn't do anything, and that is rough. Bark. <laughs> I didn't go into that intending to make a joke. Alright, dishonorable mention time. Reshif, the Dark Being. Reshit the Dick Being is a level 8 light fiend with the following effect. This can only be ritual summoned with final ritual of the ancients. You know what? That's why he's like number 11, because his ritual's got a cool name. <laughs> There's also like, I think, one of the antagonists in Reshif of Destruction. And we're finally gonna play some Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm an adult. An obscure like Game Boy Advance game I think I actually owned. And it's one of those early Yu-Gi-Oh! games that like plays by like the fake rules, if you know what I mean, where it's not like the real cards with the real effects with the real rules of the game. He plays with that weird, janky... You'll know what I'm talking about if you've played him. But that has literally nothing to do with this card whatsoever. <laughs> Once per turn, by discarding a spell card from your hand, you can take control of one of your opponent's monsters until the end of the turn. 2500 attack on a level 8 is pretty bad. However, you know, for ritual version of Big Eye, not the worst thing in the world. The specific discard cost of a spell card is pretty clumsy, and normally that makes a card pretty crappy because you know, you can't use its effect if you don't have the right card in your hand, and you have all these other cards in your hand that you can't discard. Feels clumsy. However, it's a ritual deck, so you probably have a bunch of spare copies of the dumb ritual that are now dead, so you might as well put them to use. However, simply stealing one of your opponent's monsters is not a game-winning effect, so the amount of deck building you need to do around this card in order to get it to work, uh, like, pretty much you can say that about any ritual monster, it isn't worth the effort to summon. However, its effect is okay, so that's why it's only a dishonorable mention. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Are you boys ready for number one? I don't know why I'm doing all the- is this why I'm doing the voices? It's only one beer. Kakul and the Awakened. I actually looked up how to say this because the last time it was on a list video, everyone felt the need to correct me. Like it matters. Why would anyone care? It's incredibly disrespectful. I get that like it's based on an uh, Irish mythology thing. I can tell you though, I have a lot of Irish in me and um, I ain't give a shit. But anyway, what's Choo Choo Lane do? <laughs> this card can only be neutral summoned with Emblem of the Awakened. Emblem of the Woke. Once per turn, you can remove from play one normal monster from your graveyard. No, you don't say. This card gains attack equal to that monster's attack until the end of your next standby phase. Really? That's a, a that's an obscure one. I guess it's so that it has the attack boost on your opponent's turn too. It's a level four light warrior. Um, would've been cool if it was level eight. This thing requires, requires a normal monster in your graveyard or to get its attack boost. At least Lycanthrope's a modest beat stick. So if you don't have anything in your graveyard, okay, it's useless to play it, but at least you can kind of attack with it. This thing is 500 attack power. So without that thing in the graveyard, this thing is useless. And then for what? Okay, you banish a blue eyes white dragon to make big number. Your opponent's just gonna pop it. <laughs> your opponent's just going to destroy it and then win the duel. This really feels like a, a gimmicky duel links card, which it's not, it's actually old as dirt. So it's it's actually so old, it's like one of the first ritual monsters to have a real effect, it's, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I don't even know what to say about this thing because it doesn't do anything. Basically a vanilla. However, it does have an effect and that effect is bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. So it's number one. Oh no, a train wouldn't be this, it'd be like this, right? Because it's like a string, it's not like a, a loop. A loop is a truck. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. I I sure enjoyed my beer. And uh, if you guys felt like I missed any cards, let me know down in the comments below. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time. Dueling.
takes both luck and skill. Show this by pressing the subscribe and notification buttons. Now, bear witness to these other Davinator 1212 videos. Hmm? Odeon! What is it, Master? It's time to apply the ointment. Mm. Come help me with this. I should have left with Ishizu. I can't reach.